MGC and the Mars databases provide the most reliable method of correcting the gradients in our images. Here we have a very simple case. This image with a nebula in the center doesn't contain any very large objects. However, in the background we can see a very complex gradient pattern. First, we're going to calibrate the flux of the image. It was taken with a Sony sensor and Bader RGB filters. Now we're going to correct the gradients with MGC and the Mars database. First, we're going to apply MGC with the default settings, disabling the Show Gradient Model option so that we can see the result. As you can see, the gradients in this image are too complex, and we need to lower the gradient scale. The correction is much better now. The correction is fairly good, but what would happen if we decreased the scale factor? In this preview, we've used a scale factor of 0 0.8. In this one, 0 0.6. then 0 0.4, and finally 0 0.2. By decreasing the scale factor, we have even reduced the halos around the stars caused by light diffusion within the optical system. What this example clearly shows is that, in places where there is nothing, MGC and Mars don't invent anything. In this second example, we're going to see how MGC and the Mars databases help to correct the gradients while still preserving any faint nebulosity. First, we calibrate the flux. This time, we're going to use the default settings because the camera has a Sony color sensor. Now we're going to correct the gradients with the Mars database and the default settings. Again, we'll disable the Show Gradient Model option so that we can see the result. In this image, there's a small overcorrection that we can avoid by increasing the scale factors to 1.2. This area is also available in the Mars U database. In this case, a scale factor of 1 works well. If we compare the two results, the correction with Mars U leaves a subtle shift toward green in this area of the image. The Mars survey is specifically designed for gradient correction. That's why we recommend using the Mars database whenever possible, because it's the most reliable option. Version 1.1 of the Mars DR1 database also includes the Oxygen 3 band. This means that we can correct images like this one, which has the H-alpha emission in the red channel and the Oxygen 3 emission in the green and blue. First, we're going to calibrate the flux. We check the Narrowband Filters mode box. The default settings are the right ones for this color palette. And we don't need to change the filter bandwidths either.
Now we're going to correct the gradients using the Mars database. In the red channel, we select the Mars H alpha band, and in the green and blue channels, we select the oxygen 3. First, we apply the process with the default settings. It looks as though we have some residual vignetting. Let's lower the gradient scale so that we can easily adjust the scale factors. This scale value is too small because the gradients are very gentle, but it will allow us to adjust the factors manually. Let's do the channels one by one. Here, we can still see traces of the nebula, so we need to increase the scale factor in the red channel. When we reach 1.8, the nebula is inverted, so we probably need a scale factor of between 1.4 and 1.5. Now, let's adjust the oxygen 3. You can see that the larger structures, especially this arc-shaped one, start to disappear as we increase the scale factor. In this case, a scale factor of 1.7 or 1.8 is about right. We can minimize this residual structure here, which looks so different in Mars, by lowering the structure separation to 1. In the blue filter, we'll use the same scale factor because it's the same image. A scale of 256 is too small for the gradients in this image. Let's go back to the 1024 pixel scale. And now let's take a look at the resulting color image. Here we can see that the corners were indeed darkened and there was a slight gradient at the bottom. The darkening is particularly noticeable in this top left corner. Now, let's apply MGC to the main view. We shouldn't be fooled by what an image looks like on the screen before we calibrate the color, because the colors we see may not be correct. The fact that the background looks greenish here doesn't mean that there's a residual gradient. If we calibrate the color with SPCC now, using this area as the background reference, we can see the real colors in the image. Now we reapply the auto stretch, linking the RGB channels, and here's the final result after the gradient correction and color calibration. Another important point about gradient correction with MGC is that it will leave the natural gradients in the image. This corner isn't darker because there's an artificial gradient in it, but because there's a natural gradient that makes it darker. We can confirm this by looking at this crop from one of the Mars masters, where we can see that, within the field of this image, this corner is indeed the darkest, and the rest of the image is full of nebulas. Music